Okay, so on to part two. Um, first, I do want to say that I don't know why, but there has been a great fear in me, like right down to my soul, kind of core, you know, that whole thing of talking about what has happened with me. And um, it's been a situation where I don't feel like I've had permission to tell everything that I had seen, gone through, experienced, however you want to put it. You know what I mean? Um, like, I've been afraid if I tell everything that I had experienced, for making it quicker, um, I've always been afraid since 1989, and apparently it wasn't one month after I turned 11, it was one month after I turned 12. No big deal, right? Um because <laughs> I was born in 77 and this happened in 89 and it was a month after my birthday um, so it was a month after I turned 12 not 11 um, I never really felt like I had permission to tell everything and I've only asked two people I don't think it's been three but let's just say three um, that I have asked some of the things do you think mankind would be okay with knowing never really got an answer um so understand that you know i am a little hesitant or reluctant to say everything but i'm going to and uh go from there um now as far as up to this point and afterwards, um, going through that doorway into this garden where there was a tree. And it was as though there were these weird flowers covering this tree. And they were all of the colors, all at once. Not like a pink flower, a red flower, a green flower, whatever. They were all of the colors, all at once. And this tree was like really, really... I don't want to call it the sacred tree of life, because that's what we know of as in like a human term, you know what I mean? But what if it was, right? Um... But I understood right from that moment how special and important this tree was. And I don't know why. <laughs> I don't really know. Um, but it was gorgeous, dude. Like a tree, you know. And it was maybe... I don't know. It was less than 10 feet tall. We'll just say that. To make it quicker, right? Um... And it encompassed every color that there is, including colors that we don't see, it contained. So what I had gathered all of these years and in that moment, you know, and since, right, um, is that the human eyes and brain and everything, you know, we can only conceive so much when it comes to divinity and and things that are on the other side and little things would be um shown to us a little differently to have a better understanding or a lack of fear or something i'm not sure um and i'll give you an example god shiva um God is an energy source. And I say God because, unfortunately, we've had this whole Christian thing. And I say unfortunately because they are some of the worst human beings on the planet. Using scare tactics to control your entire being. For the better, hopefully. So set aside all their pedophilia crap. And, you know, it's supposed to be for the betterment of mankind. And yet we're supposed to overlook the mass of millions murdered. 
And if you look up the French Inquisition, and I don't mean Spanish, I mean French, as in these people wanted you to convert to Christianity and let go of your pagan ways at that point way back in the 1600s, um, if you didn't convert, you were put to death. And some of the most brutal and mo most painful of all ways. And yet these people want you to worship them. And set all of that aside, along with all of their pedophilia. Um, so no offense to anybody, but I think, you know, when it comes to Christianity and their divisions, like Protestant and Lutheran and blah, blah, blah. Not everyone is a bad person. Not every preacher or not every pope is going to be dusting stuff under their carpet so it looks clean and perfected. Um, you know, some of them, I think, are actually decent human beings. But you can't deny history. When it comes to, like I'm saying, with God, if we, or Shiva, whatever you want to call it, you know... Um, my lord, meet him more. Um, if we were to see that energy presence for the way that it actually is, I don't think that the human race would be able to comprehend it, let alone survive seeing it in its natural state. Um, I don't think the human experience would be able to comprehend. You know what I mean? Um, so, with the colors in this tree, encompassing every color within a human spectrum, as well as the colors in a non-physical entity. And I hope I'm using the right words, because the human words are minuscule compared to the grand of what you would consider a paragraph versus a tiny little substance. We as human beings do not have the proper words to use to describe. So I'm trying. Um, where these presences came from that I had experienced, there were a total of six of them there with me. Um, and I'm not sure if those were what you would call God and his two people or the devil and his two people. I think that they're actually your spirit guides, your guides that come in your time of demise. And... Um, other people that have died that are going to watch this, dude, I want your take because it would help me with a lot that I don't quite understand. And maybe you do. And maybe I can help you. Maybe I can help other people. And that's why I'm opening my mouth. Because um, I've always been really afraid, dude. Like, a lot of the things that I had gone through, I'm not sure if the human race can handle. But I'm going to tell you anyway, because I think it's important. Um, this experience in going from life into death and then stepping into, which I wasn't stepping, I wasn't walking, period. I'm just like kind of floating in a way, right? Um... And I had no control over the movement. If I wanted to go left or right or forward or backward or up or down, I had no say. That's a little scary. Because you don't have any control over your soul. And your soul's movement. Um... You don't have any say as far as when you're going to survive and when you're going to die. You might think that you do, especially in times of taking your own life. That's not up to you. I will be covering more 
when it comes to religious things because this series is all about enlightenment and the quantum mechanics of enlightenment and Freemasonry. Um, look up those words, quantum mechanics and enlightenment and Freemasonry, which is why I'm including this into this series because it's covering everything. Um, and I do want to cover ancient texts big time from the oldest starting with and up to the newest of ancient texts because they're all more or less along the same line just told in different ways except for what's considered the bible the bible is more along the line of a fable because it does have seeds of truth but like I had said, and it's no offense to anybody, like it or not, I don't care. Um, a vast majority of what is written down in the Bible is used as scare tactics to control your life. For the better, thankfully. Not for the worse, you know. God forbid. <laughs> you know? But it is actually used to scare you into doing or not doing, and being, and not being, in your existence. So I had gone into this garden, which had a wall around it. And I perceived that in my eyes, as a child dying, as like a brick wall. I don't believe that's what it was. I do believe... And understanding what had happened and so on and looking back and everything, I do believe that that wall surrounding this garden with this magical looking tree in it, um, I believe that that was like the fine line between life and death and its actual location in that presence. Um, I do not believe with having my experience, that there is a Christian, Catholic, however you want to place yourself, um, version of heaven or hell. I do believe it is ultimately your, whether you're good or bad. But I don't think there's any stereotypical location for good people and bad people like you're going to hell and that's down there and you're going to heaven and that's up there i don't think that there's anything like that they are in the same space i also believe that our creator and the most ancient of would refer to our creator and the one that destroys is the same being and that's shiva um, and when it came to Christianity on forward, we would refer to that presence as God. And then in the same sense, you have, you know, the yin and yang, which I've covered, um, positive versus negative. That is in the same being. So I believe that God and the devil versus, you know, God and, or including God and death itself, right? Because we all think of death as in black robe and a sickle. And we think of God as a white robe with long flowing hair. You know, um, they're the same being. Because it is with positive and negative, you know, and life and death. And that energy source... And I say energy source because we as humans are the only ones with these physical shells that we are imprisoned within. And I say imprisoned because you just can't get up and leave your body and then come back into it when you feel you want to. Um, astral projection, blah, blah, blah. And we'll cover all that later. You know what I mean? But... You just can't get up and be like, okay, I'm going to heaven right now. I'll be back in five minutes. You know, you're trapped within your human shell. It is a prison. Um, it is a nightmare. Life itself 
is a nightmare compared to the reality of being awake, which is death. And I believe that I was shown things, like I had said, um, in my own perception, because I wouldn't have been able to comprehend things on their level. It had to be done some more on my level of comprehension. You know what I mean? Um, and I keep saying, you know what I mean? I'm sorry. Um, what had happened after that? And I'll get into a couple more parts because this is already just past 15. Um, and I want to keep each one around 20. Um, I was in multiple places at the same exact time. Now, while all of this is going on in death, so to speak, I was actually still here, a part of me, in the garage, doing circles, which I would refer to in my little human experience as loser laps. I'm doing little loser laps around my human body. And I believe that was to keep the present warm and draw attention to the right person to come and help me so that I could survive physically and be brought back to life. Um, at the same time that I was still out in the garage pacing around my slumped over body, um, I was also in death and going through that and learning things and being shown things. Now, I was also in a place of void and darkness. I call it void because there's no light source whatsoever um, in certain spots of death. And we'll just put it like that. So it makes it a little easier for you to understand. Because I do, I, I really don't even understand everything all myself. But I'm telling you how, how it was for me. Not for you, but for me. Because your death experience, like I said, I'm sure is your own. You didn't go out the same way that I did. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um... I was actually in the hospital as well, and that's scary, and I'm going to tell you everything that happened there too, and I'm sorry if it gives someone nightmares for the rest of their life, because it's given me nightmares, and that's why I'm afraid to say everything. I am scared to death, so to speak, but I'm bum psh, talking about death, I get it, um... Dude, death is freaky, man. I'm not afraid of dying, but I want to live. I'm not afraid of, you know, the pain like I would be, and I've mentioned. Um, I'm afraid, period. Because I don't have control. And as a human, we would like to have control. And we would like to have control over what happens to our life and death and control over what happens to our soul. And we do not. So, before I go any further, I'm going to pause this one now, upload it, and go back into recording another video. And I'm sorry if it's multiple parts and you don't want to deal with multiple parts, but it's making it easier for my phone to record and upload and everything. And I should have turned down the, uh, going from like the HD down notch, you know, so it'd make uploading time a little faster. My bad. I'll probably do that on the next one. But, um, stay tuned for what's left because it's a whole lot to cover. And if I do give anyone nightmares, I'm sorry, dude. Don't watch anymore. Because the next video is going to be worse. I'm going to tell you some things you're not going to want to hear. So if this is already too much for you, and be realistic and honest with yourself. If you can't handle what I've said thus far, 
don't watch any further in these in these episodes for this particular subject because it's going to get worse. My bad. There you go.